arrived in the middle of the night. Oh boy, what a sight. This strange place was now their home. As if that wasn't bad enough, they uncovered a guy called Nuff. And now their lives are upside down. Never be the same with him around. Oh, mommy, an Egyptian mommy. Oh, it ain't funny. He's for real. Pharaoh, I've seen Pharaoh. Until he's healed The afterlife is pending an appeal And to keep him under wraps is an ordeal Nothing, nothing, nothing oh, Suffering sphinxes If it weren't for watching the segments advertising new and delicious forms of pizza There would be nothing in this modern world to do <laughs> Nothing to do, my princeship. Oh, the taskmaster said. Aren't you forgetting a little something? Why are you not working on your task for the week? You haven't assigned me one. A technicality. No, are you up there? I asked you to clean up that mess in the kitchen. Oh, she's a slave, mother. I must speak to her. Rah, in heaven. Some days it's hard to get some one-on-one -on -one chastising in around here. <laughs> kitchen is a disaster zone. You promised me you'd clean it up before I got home. Uh, when I said promise, you thought I meant that was something I would do with certainty. When in actual fact, in ancient Egypt, promises made by a ruler were subject to vast interpretation. Some things never change. I want that kitchen straightened up pronto, Mr. Princeship. <laughs> I'm assigning you task number 435. Make good on a promise. <laughs> Between slave mothers and taskmasters, being regal is not what it used to be. <laughs> Clean your mess in the kitchen. Clean your mess in the attic. Make good a promise. <laughs> I suppose begging you for assistance would be of no consequence. Can't you see I'm communing with the cosmos? <laughs> I thought it impolite to look. And by the way, I can't believe you eat this stuff. Don't you know you are what you eat? Well, in that case, I'm a corn ring, which is fine for the bright and cheerful in the back. <sighs> well, personally, I'm on a total health kick. I'm eating nothing but green vegetables and freshly squeezed juices for a week. Well, in that way, you're very much like the bewitching high priestess of ancient Egypt. Really? Mm. For many moons, they would eat nothing but pulverized papyrus sprouts and lotus tea. It was supposed to sanctify the body and purify the soul. Exactly. Mm. Of course. <laughs> Everyone knew that they were only laying off the goat cutlets to try and drop off a couple of extra demon. This has nothing to do with losing weight, Pyramid Pal. It's all about health and well-being. Mm. That's what the priestesses used to say. Oh, I need a shot of wheatgrass. <laughs> To, but I'm, I'm cleaning the corn ring mash out of my mold. Robbie, with you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm cleaning the corn ring mash out of my mold. No, it's me. Help me with these boxes. They're, they're filled with candy. Brian, heaven, why didn't you say so in the first place? Careful, easy now. Risk them before you damage them in any way. <laughs> Or a protector. Where in the modern world did you stumble across such a treasure trove? You are looking at the future champion of our school's chocolate almond candy drive. When do we eat them? Don't you want to know what I'm talking about? Not when I have the scent of chocolate morsels wafting around my nostril cavities. I thought they plugged up your nostril cavities when they made you a mummy. Oh. They did. I didn't want to eat lunch anyway. Well, I do. <laughs> so this junior spelling team is planning a field trip to the regional finals. 
but that's the boring part. Oh, I can't wait to hear the exciting part. <laughs> the exciting part is the first kid that sells 50 boxes of candy wins a three DVD set of the greatest spelling bees of all time. <laughs> that's the exciting part? When do we eat them? Didn't you hear me? It's a three DVD set. I want to eat the candy. <laughs> And all I have to do to get it is sell a bunch of stupid candy. Steffi, do you want to buy one? Please. This body is a temple. It's only spinach juice for me. Mm. <laughs> when do we eat them? Eat them? Eat what? The boxes and boxes of chocolate-covered almonds. When do we eat them? When? When? You don't understand. We're going to sell them all to the neighbors. We're never going to eat them. <laughs> Never? Oh, I see. I've had the shock of my afterlife. I'm sorry. I should have broken it to you more gently. Just explain to me, calmly and quietly, why it is that we're forbidden from consuming the tantalizing treats. It's called a candy dry. You take Boxes of chocolate. Creamy chocolate. Door to door. You ask people if they want to buy a box, and then you collect the money for a good cause. And the good cause is not that of buying more chocolate? No. Then the cause is not good enough. <laughs> you should consume the chocolate and let the neighbors fend for themselves. I'm really sorry you feel that way now. You see, I was kind of counting on you to help me out. But I guess if you don't have the willpower not to eat any of the chocolate. No willpower. <laughs> I'm the prince of Abu Simbel. I was born with willpower coursing from my head to my ancient Egyptian feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Indignation always makes me dizzy. I don't know enough. Are you sure you can help me out without eating any of the chocolate? I really want to win this prize. I'm sure. I'm absolutely without question sure. But do you promise? <laughs> How about you and I just split a box? No, none. Not even one tiny little nut. As a ruler of ancient Egypt, I will not eat a single chocolate covered almond as I help you win the DVD. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no! I was just listening to them. They make such a perfect sound in their pretty little tomb. Okay, remember, you're just a regular student selling chocolate for the spelling team. You're not a mummy raised from the dead or anything like that. Agreed. <laughs> You ring the bell, you ask the person if they want to buy a box, and then you hand it over. Board protector, I am not without a brain. Sorry. It is in my canopic jar, sitting behind my sarcophagus, but it is there. Okay, so I'll head this way, and you head that way. We'll meet back at home. I will not fail you, royal protector. I will thrust boxes upon the neighbors with all my guilt-inducing might. You're natural. <laughs> I'm a natural. I am a natural. <laughs> oh, a student from the neighborhood. What can I do for you? Sorry to disturb you, common woman. Would you care to purchase a box of chocolate-covered almonds to help spelling at the local high school? Chocolate-covered almonds, my absolute Favorite. I'll take two. Thank you. <laughs> oh, your grip's a little on the tight side there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I'm sniffing. I'm not eating. A prince is allowed to sniff, correct? Oh, right in heaven. What harm can there be in a simple... <laughs> <laughs> Undeserving! Undeserving! Just loosen your grip. Oh, my! Oh, 
all do that. Oh, the willpower was willing, but the taste buds were also weak. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't have a beverage to wash it down, would you? <laughs> the main! Oh, man. I won't part with a single nut of them. Nut? You are the nut in this neighborhood, knocking on doors and not even coughing up the candies. There should be a law. <laughs> oh, by the hand of hatchet, sir. I think that last box might have been one too many. Nuff, you home yet? <laughs> I went to 25 houses and sold nine boxes. I think that's pretty good. How'd you do? I did as well as any candy selling fairer would have done in these modern times. Oh, yeah? How many do you have left? None. None? You sold them all? Sold. <laughs> What's all this? Evidence of human fallibility. You ate them. How could you? <laughs> you know how much I wanted to win those DVDs. Oh, by the way, what is a DVD? That's not the point. You ate all the chocolate almonds. I tried Royal Protector. I refrained from eating them for as long as was royally possible. I did not even begin to consume them until you had left my presence for at least three to five minutes. <laughs> but enough. You promised. How dare you, Prince Nuff of Abu Simbel? How could you? To make a royal promise you did not keep. Well, <laughs> to be fair, my family has not been keeping royal promises for several millennia. It is kind of a tradition. Silence! <laughs> I remind you of your task for the week, Prince Nuffer Titi. <laughs> Number 435. Make good on a promise. <laughs> But I already cleaned my room. And now you have to clean up your act. Oh, a skillful turn of phrase. Now, when you say the word act, you mean... More silence! You must make good on your royal promise, your princeship. You must replace the chocolate almonds you so mistakenly consumed. You must help your royal protector win his much-desired DVD. What is this object called a DVD? Do you not know anything? Yes. I have a brain, see? It is here, in this canopic jar. <laughs> no. That is the royal spleen. A DVD is a shiny, circular plate with a hole in its centre. Can you eat off it? No. If you did that, all the food would fall through the tiny hole. <laughs> you are a wise taskmaster set. Now, make good on your promise. Or there'll be demerit points in your future. This is an easy one. I shall simply replace the candy with the use of magic. And no magic this time. <laughs> All is lost. I will never accomplish my list of tasks. I will never gain entry into the Golden Palace. It is impossible to replace those chocolate sweeties. <laughs> My afterlife is over before it's even begun. Oh, stop your royal whining. Just whip up another batch of chocolates. I've never used a whip in food preparation before. <laughs> oh! well, there's got to be some leftover chocolate Easter bunnies around here somewhere, and there's always Dad's secret chocolate stash in the garage. All you need is almonds. Will you help me, servant Steffi? I don't know if I can resist the crunchy, yummy goodness of those chocolate sweeties. Not me, bandage boy. I have taken an oath never to touch chocolate again. Uh, you can use a glove. Go get James. It's his dumb contest. Uh, in ancient Egypt, we would eat everything from curried crocodile lips to jellied camel's hump, but we would never, ever drink that. <laughs> uh, what is this? Hmm. They're not on. <laughs> They're sun-dried scarabs, often referred to as dehydrated dung beetle. <laughs> and traditionally used as an almond substitute in ancient Egyptian cuisine. Wow. 
What modern man can resist the temptation of a chocolate-covered dung beetle? <laughs> right, Protector, our recipe is complete. This time, you ring the bell, you take the money, and you give him the chocolates. No wrestling, no biting, and no crying. No fun. We'll meet back here when we're done. You again. Last time you bit me. I did not bite you. I was trying to eat an almond, but your fleshy arm got in the way. Go away! Uh, 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 no money is required for these. Mmm. Nutty. Oh my goodness, these are delicious! And they crunch in the mouth, too. I'll take two. I <laughs> will Hello. I'm selling chocolate-covered almonds to help send the spelling team to the regional finals. A uh, free sample? Mm. Yes! Free sample? <laughs> Run away! I can't believe how much people like these chocolates. It's almost like they had some secret ingredient or something. I knew it. Oh, those flavorful nuggets were much beloved on the banks of the Nile. Let's go grab the rest of the boxes. If we hurry, we can sell them all before it gets dark. <laughs> Enough! The rest of the chocolates, they're all gone! Lotuses. Who in the name of Thoth would dare steal the prized dung beetles from Nuff, the prince of Abu Simbel? Hmm? Dung beetles? <laughs> Did you just say dung beetles? Not necessarily. <laughs> the acoustics in this room are deplorable. <laughs> We've been selling door to door dung beetles! Chocolate covered, it makes them less fleshy. I, I detect that this has offended your modern palate in some way. No kidding! <laughs> I'm gonna find the rest of them before someone gets sick. Ah! Someone is gonna pay for this! <laughs> There's some things even I can't protect you from. Wrath of the slave sister. <laughs> Look at this. Look what I just flossed out of my incisors. Some kind of insect leg. <laughs> You are the thief who ate all the royal protector's chocolates. They were not chocolates. Chocolates do not have feet, and chocolates do not have the ability to get out of the box and walk away. How dare you pilfer the dung beetles of a pharaoh! Tell me you did not just say dung beetles. I did say dung beetles. Oh. I told you not to tell me that! I do not know what the issue is. Uh, dung beetles are traditionally used as an almond substitute in ancient Egypt. <laughs> Out of my way. I need a burger, fries, a deep dish pie, and a double frosty. Uh, remember what you said. You are what you eat. I am not a dung beetle. And there are some things in this world that herbal tea will not wash down. <laughs> I can't believe you thought it was a good idea to feed people 5,000-year-old dung beetles. Uh, 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 when you're out of 5,000-year-old almonds, it is the next best thing. <laughs> and I only had four boxes to go before I won. I really wanted that DVD set, Nuff. Oh, it is all my fault. If it had not been for my lack of willpower, you would have been extremely riveted by dull and irritating spellers by now. <laughs> It's okay, enough. There's nothing we can do. It is not okay, Royal Protector. I know exactly what we can do. What? Take a nap. I'm sure to see something in my sleep. <laughs> no. Or I will create four more new boxes with the use of ancient Egyptian magic. Oh, 
Set said that if you used magic, the task wouldn't count. I understand, Royal Protector. That does not concern me. It is more important to make good a promise than to accomplish this petty task. Are you sure? I swear on my afterlife. I will not disappoint you. Did you get hit on the head? <laughs> this. Little of that. Maybe a little more of that. <laughs> Should we use the chocolate-covered almonds or the chocolate-covered dung beetles? The chocolate-covered dung beetles did sell better. <laughs> Maybe we should go half and half. You know, split the difference. Agreed. Wait. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm sure. As an ancient Egyptian ruler, I'm sure. <laughs> Congratulations, Prince Nuffer Pupset. You are awarded task number 435. <laughs> but I don't understand. You said if Nuff used magic, the task wouldn't count. I suppose that is true, but I'm awarding his princeship a bonus point for understanding the true meaning of the task. A promise to a friend should be set right, no matter what the cost to oneself. I understood true meaning. <laughs> Does this mean that we get to keep the magic box of sweeties? Yes? Actually, no. No? no? <laughs> there have been a couple of orders sent down from the Golden Palace. King Tutankhamun wants a box of dung beetles. Queen Nefertiti wants a box of nuts. I was thinking I might take them two of each. You wouldn't have change for two camels and a goat. <laughs> I know it's kind of long, but it gets more interesting in hour six. You'll see. I. Well, the Sahara had more life in it than this. Entombment was more exciting. Ah, purgatory was a pomegranate pie compared to this. You don't like it? It's awesome. So much. Oh. Who could that be? I wondered why my chocolates were so crunchy on the outside and so creamy in the middle. There was a beetle inside! <laughs> <laughs>